All right. I think it needs to be said first that I really don't have the right to be making this hypothesis. There are hundreds of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of uh, physicists throughout the world that make this hypothesis and have it stand up. But it hasn't happened. Now, I've run across videos online, uh, one of which was claiming that the Earth is continually growing, plate tectonics is wrong, and all the positions of all the continents right now can be explained because the Earth was smaller and it just blows up by itself. I saw another video that argued the reason that light acts like a particle and a wave at the same time is because the photon is actually made of a particle spring that moves through space. I walked by a book in the library that argued the Big Bang didn't happen. And then what really happens in the universe is there's a solidifying plasma. Uh, and that, that redshift of distant galaxies is an optical illusion. There's more than enough crackpot hypotheses trying to pass themselves off as theory. Uh, so to correct this, I'm going to state first and foremost, this is my hypothesis. This isn't theory at all. This is a guess. This is a guess that I've made reading papers and uh, observing galactic rotations. And, uh, however I manage to go about it, this is just a guess. This isn't theory at all. Nobody's proven anything about this. But nevertheless, I wanted to move forward and I wanted to make it. So, um... I'll begin here. There is no dark matter. My guess. Now when I say that there is no dark matter, I don't mean that the behavior of galaxies is an illusion. I know that there is less mass within galactic clusters than can be allowed for the amount of gravity which is seen in these clusters. My explanation for the behavior simply doesn't acknowledge any particulate solution to this problem. So if you're looking for a particle that causes the behavior of galactic clustering, you're in a wild goose chase. That's my guess. Instead, I suggest that accord, in accordance with general relativity, that if space-time is like a fabric, then there is a means by which this space-time can be shaped into a cluster and it can be observed and has been proven by Albert Einstein. When it came to trying to resolve what happened within Schwarzwald's black holes, Einstein was very, very puzzled and uh, worried that there would be such a place where space and time could just come to a stop. He wanted to find new ways to explore the problem. And with a colleague, Nathan Rosen, he resolved that in the event of the formation of a black hole, a wormhole may emerge from the scenario. And this wormhole would allow the connection in space-time between two very distant points, and that it would have a connection that bypassed all the space-time around it. Einstein does the calculations. Turns out it's OK. <clears throat> but there's an issue when you deal with wormholes, and that is that you can go through it and come out at a point in space and time before you left. This results in an argument in causality. But fortunately enough, later on in a paper called, uh, I believe it was The Particle Problem in Multiply Connected Space Time, it was revealed that causality could be preserved. So, Einstein says it's okay. Causality will be preserved. What is the issue with a wormhole? The issue with the wormhole is that in that same paper, it was revealed that time was not allotted for the existence of that wormhole, that it would come to a stop in an instant, immediately after the wormhole was formed. To which I ask one simple question, what is time? Ah. So Einstein's willing to argue that, yeah, a wormhole can open up between distant points in space and time because of the behavior of black holes. But the problem is that the time doesn't last long enough for the wormhole to be sustained. So now I just want to ask the question of time. And according to general relativity,
time moves slower as you go deeper within a gravitational field. So, up here, I'm at a higher radius above Earth, and time is moving faster for me. Down here, I'm closer to the, I'm a shorter radius to Earth, and time moves slower. And if you follow that trend, on and on and on, eventually, you come to a point where time stops. And that's called the event horizon. This isn't like special relativity. In special relativity, two objects can be moving past one another. And because it's relative, you don't have any argument as to, you know, which one is right and which one is wrong. You don't have any argument that your time and my time could be different because we're both relatively in motion. But with general relativity, this is not the case. Your time dilation is related to your radius, how high or low you are, that you can't really argue much on. And because of this, I say, as a guess, that as you approach what's called the event horizon of the black hole, time slows down until it stops. And you can imagine yourself on the surface of the black hole with the slowest moving clock in the whole universe, looking up and watching everything unfold. But wait a sec. How can it be in my example that you would come to the stop at the event horizon? According to most theoretical physics today, you go under the event horizon and you keep on falling until you reach the singularity. Well, I believe that this can be explained through another black hole concept. It resolves the problem of falling into a singularity. It, revol it resolves the problem of falling below the event horizon. And it can allow for the continuation of the hypothesis. The answer to this problem is non-singularity. Non-singular black holes instead of singular black holes. Already, Einstein field equations have been drawn up, which prove that their existence is possible. So, the simple change that is a drastic jump, I believe, in this hypothesis, is to move from the singular concept of black holes into the non-singular concept. I imagine what you should be saying right now is a non-singular black hole, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, in order for a non-singular black hole to exist, that would mean that there had to have been a singularity that had so much energy and mass poured into it at once that it actually opened up and started expanding in all directions. Does that really make any sense? Can you really argue that something could force open a singularity like that? And honestly, I don't have the calculations to prove that that happened. What I do know is that that's how our universe formed. That the origin of the universe and the idea of the Big Bang is that the universe began as a singularity that expanded outward. And that if we can argue then that this universe formed from a singularity which expanded, that perhaps the pattern can be repeated through black holes in our own universe and that the behavior is all connected. Well, so that's it. That's really the whole theory. The idea is that when a black hole forms, it forms as a singularity for a moment. And after that moment, it expands outward as a massive area near an event horizon. And that above and out inside the universe surrounding it, there is a gravitational drawing in towards the event horizon of that black hole. But within the black hole is what would be called a white hole, an area of inverted space-time, which forces apart the entire black hole and creates a wormhole, which can connect to another distant galaxy. And because of that connection, it realigns all of space-time around it 
to form what we call their clusters. And I don't have any real proof for it right now. All I've done is amass the research of other people that have come before me and put them together and strung them up in this hypothesis. So, I could be wrong, and I don't mind saying that I could be wrong. What I'd really like to do at this point is change the discussion a little bit. To say, hey, maybe dark matter doesn't exist. Maybe looking for particles in space that draw gravity out of nothing isn't the right way to look at the problem. So, believe me or don't believe me. At least take what I've said into account and let's try to change the discussion on dark matter to think, you know what? Maybe we're coming at the problem the wrong way. My name's Ben Stever, and this is my hypothesis.